In this video, I'm going to talk about different options for surgery for treatment of primary breast cancer. I'm restricting this video to people who do not have disease elsewhere in the body. So the first thing that I'm going to cover are a couple of terms. The first one is lumpectomy. This is called many other different things. It's called breast conserving surgery. It can be called wide local excision. It can be called segmentectomy or wedge resection. Really what we're talking about is breast preservation surgery where you keep most of the breast. And the nice thing about this surgery, if it can be done, is that you keep the contour of the breast, you keep sensation in the breast, and your survival is not compromised compared to if you have the whole breast removed. I'll go over that again in a moment after I talk about mastectomy. The next thing I'm going to talk about is mastectomy. Mastectomy is removal of the entire breast. When we remove just the breast, that's called a complete mastectomy or a simple mastectomy. When the lymph nodes are removed, this is called a modified radical mastectomy. Why modified? Let me give you a little bit of history here. In the old days, radical mastectomy was performed because people would present with very advanced cancer and we didn't know that the surgery was unnecessary. Radical mastectomy is done no longer. So I'll just describe what it involved. It involved removal of part of the chest wall. I've actually had one patient who was treated decades ago who had radical mastectomy and even when we consider it now, most surgeons have not performed radical mastectomy in a long time. What we do in people with very advanced disease that we can't remove with a regular mastectomy is give chemotherapy or other therapy first. That's covered in another video. So lumpectomy is an easy term to remember for keeping the breast, removing the cancer. Mastectomy means removing the breast. A lot of people want to do the most they can to improve their survival. They want to do absolutely everything. The key thing to realize is that removing more normal breast tissue doesn't improve your survival. As long as the lumpectomy achieves a couple of things, removes all the tumor, leads to a cosmetically acceptable result, meaning you're happy with how your breast looks, as long as we can get a good margin of tissue around a lumpectomy, around the tumor, which is part of a lumpectomy, a lumpectomy gives you the same survival as mastectomy. So a lot of people say, I want to do everything possible. They want chemotherapy. They want radiation therapy. They even want bilateral mastectomy. It doesn't improve your survival in rare, except for rare circumstances. So lumpectomy is what we recommend for most people. Now lumpectomy is followed by radiation therapy. I've covered in the radiation video some people who can't get radiation therapy. There are just a few people who can't. So if you have lumpectomy followed by radiation therapy, your outcome is as good as if you had mastectomy. I'm going to talk about what the impact of mastectomy is on people's lives. Mastectomy is sometimes really acceptable for people who, let's say, have small breasts and it's going to be hard for them to have the tumor removed and still have a cosmetically acceptable result. The other situation would be a very large tumor in a smaller breast. For example, ductal carcinoma in situ, which is non-invasive disease, we can't shrink before surgery. There are some studies looking to see if we can, but right now it won't respond to chemotherapy. So if one has an A-cup breast, and a tumor that takes up most of the breast, it's going to be hard to get a good margin, and it's going to be hard for you to be happy with the result of the surgery. So in many women, mastectomy with reconstruction leads to a better, meaning more cosmetically acceptable result. So it's important to consider mastectomy with, radi with reconstruction as well. Women can have reconstruction no matter what their age. We've had people get reconstruction at the age of 80. This is part of preserving who you are as a woman and who you are as a person. And the thought of waking up without a breast mound can be very difficult with, for people. 
We're going to cover reconstruction in another video, but there are lots of different types of reconstruction, and you'll have choices about that as well. So the other surgery that you will hear about when you have breast cancer is assessment of the lymph nodes. Those are the glands, lymph glands, just like we have in our neck when we get an infection. We also have glands under our arms. We actually have glands all over our body. Breast cancer, the breast itself, drains to primarily the lymph nodes under our arm. The area under the arm is called the axilla. And when we want to find out what stage people's cancer is, we need to know if the lymph nodes are involved. The first thing we do is we take a look at the lymph nodes before you have any surgery. We do that with ultrasound. If the nodes are abnormal in appearance, we'll do a fine needle aspirate. This is just a tiny needle. And if those cells are positive, it means that we're going to do a more extensive assessment of those lymph nodes because your lymph nodes are positive. Now, fine needle aspirate can be negative, and in that case, if we're still worried, we're actually gonna remove those surgically. A sentinel lymph node assessment is not the same as a fine needle. This is when the surgeon, at the time of lymph node removal, will inject a blue dye or a radioisotope. This is safe for you because it's a small dose. And then we see where does that dye go, and that helps us identify the one or more lymph nodes that are the sentry nodes. We've covered this in another video as well, but I think it's helpful to repeat it. So the sentinel node is kind of a sentry node. And if that node is negative or those nodes are negative, it's very likely the other lymph nodes are negative and you won't need a full axillary lymph node dissection. If those nodes are positive, we do recommend that you have further lymph nodes removed for two reasons. One is it tells us the stage of your cancer. Stage depends on not just the size of the tumor, but the number of lymph nodes. And that can help us prognosticate and also identify whether you need more or less systemic therapy. The other procedure that can be done for lymph node assessment is a sentinel node biopsy that's negative. If it's negative, you most likely won't need additional nodes removed unless the surgeon goes in and those nodes are palpable. Sometimes, if a node is heavily involved with cancer, the dye will just skip that node. So I, I don't mean to complicate the subject, but there are always exceptions. What we're providing is general information. As you know, this isn't medical advice. It's sort of some preparatory material or reinforcing material to other information you'll get from your medical team and some that you might get from your report on Yerba. Your Yerba report can give you some personalized information about your own treatment thus far and what to expect going forward. So we've covered mastectomy with reconstruction or without, lumpectomy, what that means, taking a look at the lymph nodes, both to remove any lymph nodes and also to help us make decisions about do the lymph nodes need more surgery, like total removal? Oh, I did want to mention, we never know how many lymph nodes are being removed. The, the lymph nodes are removed based on where they lie according to different muscles in your armpit. So people will say, how many lymph nodes will the surgeon remove? We actually don't know. They remove a fat pad. And you may have anywhere from six to 25 nodes in that fat pad. That, we find that number out after this goes to the pathology lab. So don't be surprised if the surgeon says, I removed a few and it's many lymph nodes. We just don't know this. Again, we remove the fat pad. This is an anatomical decision. We don't go in and count how many lymph nodes that we're removing. So I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. It's something I get asked a lot by people. I also wanted to cover prophylactic surgery just because we're talking about surgery. Some women, first I'll cover bilateral mastectomy. A lot of people think, I never want this to come back again. I'm going to have both my breasts removed. There's some problems with that line of reasoning and we haven't done a great job in our profession explaining that. We have multiple studies showing that removal of the normal breast does nothing to your survival. The chance of you getting a 
cancer in the other breast is so low and the cost, not just financial, but the side effect cost, the complication rate of having a surgery that you don't need that won't improve your survival makes a lot of us concerned about what we're seeing in rising rates of bilateral mastectomy, meaning removal of both breasts when there's only one cancer in one breast. I'm going to talk about a very specific different situation. If you have a genetic mutation that increases your risk of bilateral breast cancer, that's not therapeutic, that's preventative. Now, not all women who have, let's say, a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation need to have bilateral mastectomy, but that may be their choice. The other option would be close surveillance with MRI and mammogram. We don't usually recommend MRI, but in people who carry a BRCA1 or 2 mutation, which we've covered in another video, um, that, that's something they may want to consider. A lot of people think about Angelina Jolie, and we actually have this phenomenon of more people getting bilateral mastectomy, and we think it might be the Angelina Jolie effect. That's what we call it in medical circles. But she had a BRCA mutation. She never had breast cancer. And in those women, a nipple-sparing mastectomy where you can keep the sensation in your breast may be prudent. We generally do not recommend that for most women who have a diagnosis of breast cancer. We've covered that in articles on our blog as well, so you can link to that as well. I've covered a lot. I've covered mastectomy, lumpectomy, reconstruction, sentinel lymph node assessment, prophylactic surgery. We'll cover removal of the ovaries prophylactically in our um, video on genetic testing and what that means for you. I hope this has been helpful. If you like this, like it, because it'll help direct other people here. You can subscribe to our channel because we'll be posting a lot of new videos specific for current um, advances in breast cancer, not just the fundamentals, but other new things that are coming along. And also some tips on how to manage life with breast cancer, how to work with your family. And if you have other ideas, just put them in the comments. Thanks so much.